Balance is a principle of design that refers to the distribution of visual weight in an artwork. There are three kinds of balance, symmetrical, asymmetrical, and radial. It may help you to understand symmetrical and asymmetrical if you think about the seesaw. Did you ever seesaw when you were a little kid? If you did, you know if the two people on the seesaw are the same weight, there's no problem and you could have fun all day. But if you ever got on the seesaw with somebody much, much heavier than you, what could possibly happen? Yeah, you got stuck up in the air, and if it's not a nice person, they'll sit there and laugh at you, and you're just stuck up there. And how do you get down? You have to balance it out. Sometimes other people will come and help pull you back down. In our artwork, we have that challenge as well. We have to balance it. With symmetrical balance, imagine your artwork has an invisible line going down it where it would be that central point on the seesaw. Well, with symmetrical balance, the right and the left side are the same, so there's no problem. Sometimes it's even a mirror image. Um, sometimes it's just equally weighted. It just looks like they're the same. With asymmetrical balance, you take that big person or that big subject, the heavy subject, and you can move it closer to that center point and it'll balance it out. Or you could take lots of little subjects and put them on the opposite side of the big one and it'll balance it out as well. The last kind of balance is radial balance, and that's when everything just radiates from a central point. And if it's right there in the center of the artwork, it's also considered symmetrical. It can be confusing, so let's look at some examples. In this elephant, the center line is not so invisible. You can see clearly that the right and the left side are mirror images of one another. This is symmetrical balance. In Trinity Wallace's painting of the wolf, I made that invisible line for you, and you can see the right and the left side are practically the same. In Timothy Carter's optical illusion artwork, you could see that invisible line going down the middle, and the right and the left side are the same. Colors are inverted, the drawing is the same, the same and it's still balanced. In Amber Wood's digital artwork of One Point Perspective Aquarium, you can see the right and the left side are practically the same. In Abigail Kennedy's Two Point Perspective watercolor painting, you can see the right and the left side are practical mirror images. In Hunter Davidson's drawing of the character, you can see that the right and the left side are the same. Even your faces are perfect examples of symmetrical balance. The right and the left side are the same if you did an invisible line. Now let's look at some examples of asymmetrical balance. My former student, Sam Miller, here used circles and squares and some triangles in this artwork. If you drew the middle line down the page, you would have circles and squares on each side of different sizes. Notice on the left-hand side, they're bigger. On the right-hand side, they're smaller. They have purple ones throughout it, as well as white ones throughout it, as well as even black ones. Even the negative space becomes shapes, but it's balanced all throughout. It's balanced asymmetrically. It's not a mirror image, not close to the same, but they're still equally weighted in color as well as shapes and forms. In Layla Garrett's watercolor, she achieved asymmetrical balance by repeating the colors that's used in the legs on the left-hand side over on the right-hand side in the water, as well as in the beak and the size of the shapes as well. In Ava Gardner's portrait here, she achieves asymmetrical balance by making the big flowers close to the line and multiple small flowers on the other side, as well as yellow spread throughout the other side. Finally, Kylie Chauvin achieved balance by making a lot of smaller um, cypress knees on the left-hand side to balance with the heaviness of that pelican on the right-hand side. Now let's look at some examples of radial balance. We achieve radial balance when we have all of our elements in our artwork radiating from a central point. If the focus of the artwork is at the center of the artwork, then it's also considered to have symmetrical balance. That's the case of my former student Sam Miller's Mandela here. Everything's coming from the center of the artwork, so it's radial and symmetrical. It's not always the case. 
as you can see here in Charlene Randall's Dragon Eye, the um, focus is not in the center of the artwork. However, there is still a center point there in the eye where it looks like everything is radiating from it. Not quite as evidently as in the Mandela. However, it's still, you can see that it's coming from that center point. Here in Andrea Washington's coffee painting, Inspired by Nature, we also see that center point where everything is just coming out, radiating from it as in a spiral, which occurs naturally. I collected all these materials to show you examples of balance. Oftentimes, artists will put everything on one side of the paper, leaving the other side looking empty, and that's off balance. So let's just move these objects around to achieve symmetrical balance. First of all, if we have a line going down one side, we want it on the other. If we have red on one side, we want it on the other. We, we want to put things balanced. That's symmetrical balance. Here, I'm showing you an example of asymmetrical balance. Things are not exactly a mirror image, but they're still weighted the same. Finally, let's play with some radial balance. Everything here is going to come from a central point in the artwork. And since I want mine to be both radial and symmetrical, I'm going to have it all coming right there from the middle as well. So that's radial balance. Okay, I'm going to do a real quick demonstration of three different types of balance. First, the symmetrical. I took and I folded a piece of paper, and I'm just going to do a real elementary project on here of something that occurs naturally symmetrical, and that is a butterfly. So I'm painting my left-hand side one wing with really thick acrylics, and I'm trying to do it quickly so that it won't dry. I want it to still be wet. Then I'm going to wet the right-hand side with a wet paper towel, fold it over, and press. And this should transfer the image over onto the right-hand side, which it did, but not quite enough for it to, to look nice. So I'm just going to go back over it again and press it again to try to get it perfectly symmetrical. Now remember, symmetrical, you have that imaginary line and everything's the same on one side as it is the other, or at least the same weight, which we have achieved here. Now I'm going to do a quick demonstration of asymmetrical balance. I'm going to paint a flower this time, and I'm painting it large on the left-hand side, but close to the central point, close to that um, invisible line going down my paper. And then I'm putting a lot of smaller flowers on the right-hand side to balance with it. So it's not symmetrical, but it's still balanced visually. All right, so that's asymmetrical. And now a real quick radial balance, and that's where everything radiates from a central point. And this time I'm putting my central point right in the middle of my paper so that it'll be symmetrical as well as radial. And I'm just having lots of fun with my lines and my dots and my colors. I'm using warm colors to create a, like a radial balanced Mandela type thing. So there you have all three of your examples again. Okay, we looked at the three types of balance, symmetrical, asymmetrical, and radial. Out of those three, I think asymmetrical might be my favorite. It's just a little more interesting and gives a little more freedom. Which one do you like best? Your project for this week, your assignment for this week, is to create any type of artwork, symmetrical, asymmetrical, or radial, or do all three of them. You could do this with paint. You could do it by just collecting materials like I did and photographing them. Um, you could do it with Legos. You could do it digital. You could do it with whatever you want. Just create something um, that, and be able to tell if it's symmetrical, asymmetrical, or radial. Have fun with it. I can't wait to see your artwork.